Alrighty, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we will be doing wheels. As you can see, I've already separated all of the metal pieces and I'm working on prepping those. Let me put the camera down and we'll talk about that some, some more. All right, so all of these metal parts come on a sheet of metal like this, and uh, they're just kind of held in with little tabs. And so you gotta cut those off. And all of the uh, smaller pieces are held in with connecting tabs, say from like here to here. So you gotta snip all of those off. And I have been using, to cut those apart, I used these snippers here. I just got these uh, a couple of months ago. I forget if I went on Amazon or eBay, but I just got these a couple of months ago and they're made for photo etch parts. And the thickness of this metal is probably pushing the limits of them. I don't think I'm gonna cut metal any thicker than that, but uh, that, did a, that did a pretty good job of cutting them off. You could, I suppose, just bend it back and forth until it breaks off. Uh, that would work in a pinch, but you risk it breaking where you don't want it. You risk bending the edge. Um, so, yeah, just get some snippers or something. And, of course, that leaves behind little um, nubbins like that that you got to remove. Uh, to remove those, you could use a little wheel like that in a Dremel tool and sand them off. That would work fine. Uh, I've been using these files. Uh, I just recently got these, and um, this one and this one. So I use this one for the inside curves and this one for the outside. Right. Well, that's a half round. I could use that for inside as well. But uh, this file, man, I tell you what, it, it eats right through that metal like nothing. So this has been removing it pretty quick for me. Um, I've already got uh, three of these done. Um, so file off the nubbin. Then go through with some uh, fine sandpaper, and you, know, you want it to feel nice and smooth. So there's 36 of these metal parts, and I've got uh, six of them done. So, um, so if your math is as good as mine, you'll know I've got 30 left to do. So uh, just take your time, file off any little uh, sharp edges, and make them nice and smooth. And then once those are done, uh, you've got the plastic parts. You've got two trees of plastic parts, and you've got to prep these as well. We need to paint this edge here silver. I mean, you can paint the whole thing, it doesn't matter. Uh, but you need at least this edge around here silver, and this edge around here silver, because once all the metal rings go on, you're going to see those little edges here. And then when it's all done, then you cut these spokes here off. Don't remove those spokes now. Uh, those spokes are holding this in position while you put all the uh, the metal spokes in. So once all the metal spokes are in and the metal rings are screwed on, then you can cut these off. Then you go in with a little brush and you just touch up where you cut off the plastic spokes. On the smaller uh, smaller wheel pieces here, what you uh, well you don't have to, but uh, what I'm doing, just because I learned from the old one, when you put the spokes in. The spokes have a, what's the right word, um, there's a metal piece that comes out of here that the spoke goes into. Um, I guess it's called a spoke nipple, I don't know. But uh, on the smaller one, like smaller one, right? On the smaller one, these spokes, the plastic spokes, kind of get in the way. There's one of those plastic spoke nipples that the wire spokes go through. And what you do is, when you put that together, that presses in to the slot. And you notice the uh, the metal spoke nipple has like a ridge around it, and that's what presses into the plastic and locks it in place. Well, on this one over there, let me get a better hold on that. On this one, the plastic spoke, on some of them, kind of get in the way just a little bit. Not bad, but just a little bit. And um, so to help me out with that, what I'm doing is I'm just going in with an X-Acto blade. And as you can see here, I'm, uh, I'm just kind of carving in a little bit. Notice how I made that part right there a little skinnier. 
That's just to give some room. That's just to give some room for that uh, metal spoke nipple to press in there without the plastic spoke interfering. So just going in there with a sharp X-Acto blade, thinning that down a little bit, and that's going to help a little bit. I mean, it's not, it's not a completely necessary step, but it might help you out a little bit. So um, if you want to do that, fine. I mean, you don't have to. It's one of the things I learned when I was doing the other wheels on the old, I don't know, one I did a few years ago. I think I built like like four of the wheels or five of the wheels, and then like, like on the last one, I realized, oh, it'd be easier if I did that. Um, so again, not completely necessary, but anything you can do to help you out here um, is a good thing. So so yeah, let me uh, let me finish cleaning up, filing up all the metal pieces prepping and painting all of these pieces, and then we'll come back and we'll start installing some of the uh, spokes and other components and start building some wheels. Okay, so um, I got all of the metal rings all, you know, cut out and filed down and cleaned up. And uh, actually, I already have been, have been uh, a little busy. I got three wheels done. I just didn't put the tire in this one because I still did the paint touch up. Um, but anyways, I, I went ahead and did a few of them just to kind of get the bugs and kinks and wrinkles worked out so that when I showed you, you know, how to do them, hopefully I won't screw up. And, um, so anyways, the first step is to install the valve stem and that gets pressed into this metal ring and then the back side gets hammered down kind of like a rivet, which, uh, kind of smushes out the tail of the brass of the valve stem and uh, that that locks it in place. Now the way I do that or the way I did those was I would I would hold the valve stem with a pair of needle nose pliers like like that. That way when I hammer on well when I hammered it in I would I would put that up against, um, I've got a little anvil and a little block with a hole in it. And basically I would put it down to where the tail of the valve stem would go into the little hole. And then I would hammer it on the needle nose pliers this way to hammer it into the hole. And then flip it over, hold that off of the edge this way, and then hammer on the tail of the brass to uh, swedge it over. That way, all of the hammering is on that edge of the valve stem and not at the point of the valve stem, because you don't want to you don't want to hammer there and bend the valve stem or damage the point there. So I went ahead and did all of those. And then the next step is to install this ring into one of these pieces, and you can see where I've painted the silver. And actually, I've you know, I painted more than I needed to, but, uh, you know, that's okay. And when you put this in, it goes in this way. So the valve stem is up there. You got to pay attention where that goes. Obviously, you don't want it right there because that would be right in the way one of the spokes. You don't want it there because that would also be in the way of the spokes. You want it right about there kind of right in the middle of one of the wider sections, and that'll be out of the way of the spokes. Now, the problem is, is that this doesn't just fit. Um, now, first off, what I would do is I would pick a spot where I want it. So right between, right between a wider one, and I'll just mark that. That mark's going to come in handy a few times. So we'll mark there where we want it. So to fit it, line up the valve stem with the mark, and you can see where it's indented down where this needs to set. So put that edge in here, and then take a look at how bad it doesn't sit, and then you have to file the diameter of the ring until it fits in. And you can kind of look, I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera, but um, you can kind of see... If you look right down in there, right down in here, you can see a gap between the ring and the plastic, and uh, you don't want that gap. 
So again, what you have to do is file the outside edge, but something you'll notice about these rings. Notice how wide it is here versus here. And what I'm referring to is right there. I know this is not turned on. It doesn't matter the dimension. Right there, how wide it is there compared to that edge right there. When these things were stamped out of the sheet, it's like the stamper was offset. So when you're filing the outside diameter, you might want to focus on this edge right around here. File that down a little bit until it fits into the wheel. And I've got one fitting right here. And that is seated down into that groove pretty much right where we want it. Now the next thing we got to kind of take a look at is you'll notice there's a little post right there and that little post is going to go into that slot. Now I'm not going to push this down yet but just lining up that post with that slot like that and then remember where the mark is and I should have I'm going to put that mark here like that so so again, lining up the slot with the little peg, like so. The valve stem sits right there, so I'm going to mark that. The reason why I'm marking this is because the tail of that valve stem is going to hit right there. And that will prevent you from pushing this down all the way. Now, not much. I mean, if you, if you don't do this next step, you'll still be able to assemble the wheel. It's just that there's a couple of little tiny things that are preventing the whole wheel from being squeezed down as flat as it can be. And so what I just kind of recommend is to go through and, and this is a new blade, but that is, uh, that is some tough plastic. Um, but just kind of go through and cut that out so there's a spot for that for that tail to sit down into. I want to do this off camera real quick just because that's uh, taking a while. And that should be plenty. Again, it's not much. It's not very much, but just enough for the uh, for that to set into. Also, probably not really necessary, um, but I also like to just kind of take that corner off just a little bit. Um, Again, I don't know how much this really helps, but it's just to give that metal ring all the chance it needs to set down around there because that ring, that ring sets down in here. It's going to go around that piece like that. And right in here, I mean, that's kind of a bent round corner. And on the plastic part, it's a sharp corner. So... I don't know how much it'll interfere, uh, but just to round that corner off a little bit, again, probably not really needed that much, but um, I do it just, just to help. Anything you can do to help get these pieces to sit down all the way is, uh, is time well spent. Those are now almost ready to go together. I'm missing something very important and I'm specifying this now because I made this mistake once already. This piece right here has to go in just like that. Now this can go on. Lining up, just double checking, making sure. Um, lining up the slot with the post and just push it down. Now, something I found that really helps me is I collect a lot of just scrap. Scrap pieces, bushings. This was an old ball bearing cage. This fits those wheels perfectly, just to give me a nice platform to work off of this way. Also, this is a scrap airplane part that I just saved because it looks cool. The diameter of this fits perfectly as a tool to press that inner ring home. So I can put that here, 
I can put this on it like that. And now if you don't have these tools, I mean, you don't have to have them. It's just something that helps. But I highly recommend you have a junk drawer full of just metal, you know, bushings and rings and just stuff. Because stuff like this helps. We can also kind of push these center parts together a little bit. And they're kind of a tight press fit. You just got to be careful not to break the, um, the pieces here. And at this point, you just want to double check, looking at the gap all the way around in here, making sure that the metal ring is, is up against the edge there. Checking the gap on the back side here, making sure that piece is up against the metal ring is as good as it can be. Again, remember, these metal rings are not stamped perfectly round or perfectly centered. So there's going to be a few little discrepancies as you look around here. But as, it, as flat together as you can get it, the better. Now remember, I said it's very important not to forget that ring in here, this piece. Yeah, ask me how I know. On uh, one of these, I forget which one it was. I don't remember which one it was, but uh, one of these, I got it all screwed together and I was ready to cut the pieces out right here. And then I noticed I had forgotten that metal ring. This was the first time in this project that um, I, I almost wanted to cry. And it's not because I was concerned about being able to fix it. I knew I could fix it, but I was about to cry because I knew what I was going to have to do in order to fix it. I had to take all that off, take all those spokes out, take it back apart. Yeah, that sucks. So one of these wheels I kind of built twice, or one and a half times, I guess, because I only redid the spokes on one side. I, I didn't redo the spokes on the back side. But anyways, yeah, that kind of sucks. So make sure you take your time, make sure you don't forget any pieces. Um, but this is where we're at so far. Uh, now at this point, the instructions tell you to put the counterbalances in, or the counterweights in. And that is these pieces here. There's seven of them around there. What I have found is that, you know, of course they don't fit where they're supposed to go. Um, but I found out that if you put them in first, if they don't go in perfectly right, then the wire spokes will interfere with them. So what I do is I put the wire spokes in first, and then I put those in. That way, they don't hit the spokes, pretty much. Uh, that's what I found to be best. So for these spokes, we'll go ahead and pull out some of the... Uh, we'll start with the bigger side. There's two different size spokes. you got longer ones and short ones. So we'll start with the longer ones. Longer ones are looking like that. Shorter ones are like that, so there's a very noticeable difference. So we need, if I remember right, 15. I'm just going to make a little pile here. Um, I think there's like 15 for the big ones. You would think I would know by now. So I got a little pile of spokes, and we need a bunch of these things. Those are the little fittings that the spokes go into. Whether you want to call them ferrules or nipples or whatever. Uh, we need a whole bunch of those. We need two of those per wheel or spoke. Yeah, two of those per spoke. They call them tie rods. Just looked in the instructions, I call them tie rods. Now, let me show you something here real quick. There are two ways you can put these spokes in. If you follow the instructions. Now, I'm just going to put them in without the uh, tie rods for now, just so you can see how they get stacked. Um... But if you follow the instructions, you put one in like that, and then you skip one, and you put the next one in like that, and then you skip one, and you put the next one in like that, and you go all the way around. Once all of those are in, you then come back on top of those like that. Now, this is the way the instructions tell you, and that's the way probably most people build it. But when I built the previous car that I did a video of this on a few years ago, 
Uh, I was looking at some forums and some other builds, and I saw on a on a forum on how somebody said that that's not the way the real car spokes are mounted. So to do it the way the real car is, instead of skipping every other one, you just put every one in. So you go that way, and then the next one. Ah, come on. And you just keep going around all the way around. And that's more like the way the real car spokes are, how that one goes under and that one's over, under, over, like that. The problem with this is that the spokes are hitting each other. And by the time you get about halfway around, they're, they're lifted up about a quarter inch. And they're so spring, you can't push them down in place. So what you have to do is you have to very slightly bend each spoke. So notice where they're intersecting right about here, about a third of the way down. So what you have to do is on the spoke that goes underneath, you kind of have to bend that down. And the spoke that's on top, you have to kind of have to bend that up. Now, you don't have to bend to much. I mean, if you think about it, each spoke only has to be bent like half the diameter of the spoke. So... To bend the spokes, now you can do it the way the instructions show you, that's perfectly fine. Um, if you're okay with it not being, you know, exactly like the real car is. There are some purists out there who like it to be the way the real car is, and honestly, I think it looks better. Um, I discussed this with a client, and uh, he and I agreed that um, I'll do it the way I did the previous one, and that is to slightly bend the spokes. And you don't really even notice. I mean, when I showed you these wheels, I mean, honestly, did any of you notice the spokes are bent? It's really not, really not noticeable. Uh, I use a pair of pliers like this, hold the spoke about there, which is about where they're going to overlap. And remember, this one needs to be bent down, so i got to lift this spoke up this way. And this one has to be bent that way. And if you look at the side profile, um, that's really all you need. That's more than you need. And sometimes after I bend them, I come back in with some flat pliers this way, and I just squeeze them, and the spring back is just enough. So you can't really see they're bent unless you look you know, at a side profile. And that's all you got to do. And so what I'll do is I'll just go through, and I'll just bend a spoke and lay it down, bend a spoke. And uh, it doesn't take much pressure. But once I get a bunch of those, once I get a bunch of those bent, then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put the tie rods on. Now the thing is, you bend one up and one down, it doesn't matter if you then put it in this way or this way. The bend is going to be the same. So you don't have to keep track of which way is up or down. It just works. And just for the video, I'm going to... I'll finish there. And then for the uh, these guys, you just got to make sure you put them on the right way. These are not... Symmetrical, and I put that on backwards, so I got to flip that around. Normally, I'm wearing my eye loop so I can see what I'm doing. Because if you look at this end, there's like a little swedged out flange. That's what gets pressed into the plastic and locks it in place. So I'll just go through and I'll put all of these on. Did I do that one backwards too? I even flipped it around. It's kind of hard to tell. Hard to tell without my... Uh... No, that's right. Nope, that's backwards. There you go. So I'll just go through and I'll put all those on. So I'll get them all lined up and, and ready to go. Alright, so once it's all ready, I'll take one. I'll just pick a spot, 
doesn't really matter where you start. And we'll get that in. And sometimes it seems like the wire is too long, but it's not. Uh, if it doesn't want to go down, pull it off to the side and then swing it in. And then that will, that will bring it in where it needs to go. Then take your little piece here. And I'm trying to do this from looking into the camera. I think that's in. Like that. And to push them in, you got a couple of choices. You could take a flat blade screwdriver and put it on the piece and just push it straight down. And that's going to push that flange into the plastic. Um, what I have been doing, though, is using my soldering iron with a flat tip. And I turn the heat down. This is from a soldering station where I can adjust the heat. And I turn the heat down so that, um, you know, it's not hot enough to solder with. But it is warm enough to where when I put it on that metal piece, it'll melt it into the plastic. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my, uh, I'm going to put my eyes on. Because I can't, I can't do this. Even zoomed in through the camera here, I can't really do that. I've got to, I've got to wear my, uh, I've got to wear my magnifiers. So I'll see if I can do this without getting my head in the way. Just so you can see what's, uh, what's happening. Well, let's, uh, we'll see how this goes here. Uh, I'll go ahead and put one more in, just so you can see how they overlap and go in. I won't know until I uh, edit the video on if you could see anything other than the top, other than the uh, the back of my head. In which case, I'll just edit it out because I don't think you really wanted to see the back of my head. I don't know. I guess some of you might if you're weird like that. I don't judge. Now, one thing you'll notice is doing it that way, doing it that way does, you know, if you touch the plastic, it does kind of dent the plastic. But this part here, you notice I didn't paint it, is because you can't see that when it's all done. That's all covered up by one of the metal rings, but I still clean up. I still clean up the mess. But there's two in, 13 to go. And um, and the nice thing about using a soldering iron is it, it kind of melts the plastic around that and it just helps lock it in and you have a little bit more control over it. Um, doing it with a screwdriver does work, but every once in a while, um, that a piece of that plastic will chip out or something like that. So you just really have to be careful. So I'll just go with the next one here, then the next one and the next one, but that's how they go in. And, uh, 
once all of those are in, once all of those are in, then you can screw on this piece. But this piece needs to be modified very slightly, so I'll get back to that when we're ready to do that. So uh, I'm just going to continue around here, and then we'll get to the next part. Okay, so here's the wheel with all the counterweights and the spokes in, and again, pushed into place with a soldering iron. And I'm kind of thinking soldering iron is the best way to go. Um, it's just more controlled. I think it locks them in better, maybe. Now, another thing that I do that's probably not completely necessary, but I will take a little bit of CA and I will use a little toothpick or something and I will just put a little bit of, bead of CA all the way around there. That just ensures that everything is locked in. And um, I did not do it on this one yet. Again, probably not necessary. They're probably fine as is. But just to make sure everything stays locked in, just a little bead around there. But after I do that, after I do that, the next thing that uh, we're ready for is for this ring right here to go on. Now there's a few things we have to do first. For one, I highly recommend you drill those holes just a little bit bigger. The screws they call for, the it's a common blade screwdriver or a common blade screw head. And you're going to have, I mean, they'll go in, but you're going to struggle. At least I struggle. And I'm concerned about breaking one of those little screws. So just to help out a little bit, I opened up the hole just a little bit. It doesn't take much. Uh, make sure you don't drill it too big or else the screw won't work. Um, but uh, I would open it up just a little bit. Now when you take this ring and you put it on here, of course it doesn't fit. You'll notice that it's actually covering up part of the, uh, the feed-through the, uh, feed piece here, the turnbuckle here. Uh, over there on that side is okay, but I don't have it centered on the holes either. It's covering up half of the thing here and half of the thing here. The inside diameter of that metal hoop is uh, too small, so we need to open it up a little bit. Now, on the forum that I mentioned before, uh, what the guy did was he took a hole saw, I think it was a hole saw, one of those big, you know, it's like a little canister hole saw, and he pressed it in and it opened up the flange a little bit. Uh, what I used, remember my scrap bin of uh, junk? Well, I have this thing. This just happens to be almost close enough. So I put that on here and I drive it down. I use a, another ring that's a little bit bigger and a hammer and I drive it down on there. And that will open it up. This one, this one just came off of it. So this one, this one is un, unmodified. This one I had already hammered on there and popped it off. And that opened it up just a little bit, but it's still not enough. What you need to do then, now if you can find something that's the perfect diameter, that would be great. This right here measures 52.5. Nine. If you had something that was about 53 and a half, you just need something 53 and a half, uh, that would be pretty much perfect, I think. Uh, I don't have anything exactly. Now, I could, I'm not your thinking, I could put this in a lathe and turn the rest of that back to the right diameter. But this is some kind of unknown super hard steel. I tested it with the file, the file didn't even touch it. I don't feel like tearing up all of my cutters on the lathe, just to turn that down a little bit. So the way you would do this at, after that, pair of channel locks, and again, just another junk bushing thing that I had. You could use a socket, you could use a piece of pipe, you could use anything round that'll fit over here. And what you do is you take this, you put that ring in, those channel locks like this, hold it square to it, and what I would do is remember what remember where you start you can mark it or whatever and just very gently squeeze and turn it and squeeze and turn it and you're not doing much I mean you just barely see it move you just barely see it squeeze in and you go all the way around 
and then you test fit it. And you keep doing that until it fits correctly. You keep doing that until that fits on there and the lip of that opening is right at the base of all of the wire feed through turnbuckle nipple things, whatever you want to call them. And I wish I could get that to focus better. There we go, it's a little bit better. So you adjust that opening and you could do the whole thing with these. You don't need a larger pipe to press them through. That just helps a little bit and it helps keep it round. But you could do the whole thing with something like this. Kind of like a homemade bead roller, kind of, I guess. And then once that's fitting, just put your screws in and uh, you're done with that side. Well, until you put that on. And then all you got to do is put all the spokes in the other side. There's like 30 of those, or 32, something like that, 31 or 32, in this side. And then you put this ring on. But of course, the opening of that ring is too small. You gotta open it up. And I have, again, another piece of just junk pipe. And it's... that one right there. That first opening, yeah, that's the, that's the size it is right now. So I hammer it down, I hammer that down, and that makes the perfect, this one is perfect. Uh, if you can find something, 47 millimeters. 47 millimeters is perfect. Right, that's the perfect size for those. I don't have to go through with this and open it up anymore. So get something 47 millimeters and drive it through this ring and then screw that on after all the spokes are in. And then you're ready to take one of these, put it on here. Now what I had to do, I had to just take out a little bit all the way around here like this. Not much, just a little bit, to get this to fit, like that. And that one goes on, of course I stopped with the spokes in. That one goes on, and then you take one of these that has the internal threads, put that in. Take one of these with the external threads and the two slots, and you just screw that together. You screw it together, you squeeze it tight, screw it, squeeze it, screw it, squeeze. Um, you just keep turning that until it's pulled that down all the way. And that's what you end up with. Now you're ready to put the tire on it. Well, I missed a step. You then have to go in and cut out all of these. So with a pair of nippers, go in, cut out here. You could use a sharp X-Acto blade. Do the same thing on that side, cut all of those out. I have actually seen photos that people posted of their model online and they did not cut out the little plastic struts there. Um, I've seen a few of them like that. You gotta remember to cut those out. It kind of kills the look of the whole wheel. So remember to cut those out. Another common mistake that I see. I see people take these little counterweights and they'll glue them into the post like that. That is backwards. And I think they do that because if you try to put it in the right way, it just does not want to fit because that little T-spot opening is too small for that end to press into there nicely. So again, kind of hard to do this through looking at the camera. I use the soldering iron and I get that in there and I'll put the soldering iron on the top of that and I'll press it in and melt it into the plastic like that. And I'll just melt that in with the soldering iron. That is about the best way I've found to do it. 
but I'll see people glue them in this way, and that's that's backwards. That's wrong. Don't do that. All right. And I think that's it for the wheel. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. I mean, as far as like what to tell you. Um, now, as far as the tires go, the original kit tires, this is one of the original kit tires. This is really hard. The edge is really warped. You're not going to get that on the wheel as is. Um, you might be able to boil it for a minute or two to soften it up. That's what they tell you to do anyways. I've never tried doing that with one of these. Um, but uh, soaking it or boiling it in hot water should work. I don't know if that'll get rid of that warp, but I think you're really going to struggle with this. The model motor car's tires, they go on really easy. That's a nice soft rubber. They just stretch on really easy. The only issue is the back flap here. That rubber is really thin. So I'm debating on whether I want to put a little glue around it just to hold that edge down. I mean, I don't think I need to because that's on the backside. You never want to see that. And that's not, I mean, nobody's going to be picking at it. Um, so it's probably fine as is, but that is an option. You could do that. But, um, but I mean, these look, these look nice. They go on easy, but they are a little bit pricey. They are a little bit pricey. So if you don't want to pay the money for those, what you could do, it's a little bit hokey, but what you could do, if you can't get these on, um, cut around here, cut off the sidewall, press the wheel onto the, or press the tire onto the wheel, and then glue the sidewall onto the back side of that. That makes sense? So you press that on, and then you just glue the sidewall around here, some rubber cement or something. Again, you're not going to see the back side. It's a little bit hokey, but that is an option. Then if you wanted to, you could paint that white. If you wanted the white walls, won't look as nice, but you could. So that is an option with these. Otherwise, I got to fork out the cash for the model, model motor cars tires. Um, but um, anyways, I think that's it for the wheels. Again, here's the finished one. So hopefully that information helps you. Um, if you have any questions, please put it in the comments. I'll do my best to address it in the comments or in the next video. But this one is getting to be way too long, so I'm going to end it here. And we are done with tires. Well, I'm not. I still have three more to finish up. But um, we are done with tires. So until next time, as always, thanks for watching.